Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our gospel reading, but just those two verses, verses 12 and 13. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. This is our text. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, we ask, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill our minds. Fill our hearts. Give us a discernment. Discernment of what temptation is and when we are most vulnerable. Help us to see that and understand it and find in you our ability to withstand it. Help us in every hour, in every moment, and as we face our temptations, we know that you have already been victorious over them for us. In your name, amen. Okay, so the question I asked was, when are you tempted the most? Or when are you the most tempted? And like I said, when I sent that to Carrick, and Carrick re responded jokingly, saying, when I'm hungry, but isn't there a, a great deal of truth in that statement? Right? So when else are you the most tempted? When you're tired? When I'm not here. When you're not here in church? Okay. Anybody else? When I'm traveling. When you're traveling? Mary? Watching one of those shopping networks. <laughs> <laughs> we like QVC just a little bit too much in our house. When you're alone? In the grocery store. In the grocery store. They say, don't go to the grocery store hungry, but how often do we do that very thing? And, and I'm going to come back to that. I want you to think about all the situations in life where you probably are the most vulnerable to temptation. And, and we kind of heard a few, but you know, think, and as we listen to the gospel reading, just these two verses, where Jesus was, what he was facing. So in, starting at verse 12, the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. Now it was like, not like saying, here, get into the truck, I'm going to drive you out back. But what does it mean by drive? Was Jesus going against his will? Was he being forced to do something that he didn't want to do? Was he? No. No. This is something he knew he had to do. This was the Father's will. He was submitting to it. So maybe drive or drove isn't the greatest way to put this. Maybe it was more of motivated, encouraged, strengthened as he went out into the wilderness. And as he goes out into the wilderness, he knows what's coming. He knows what he's going to face. He knows especially what he's going to have to endure. And so, just like the cross, he's not looking forward to it. He doesn't want to have to face this, but he knows it's necessary. Necessary not for himself, but necessary for us. And it's so important we hear that. As we listen to this, and we see that word, and recognize what the Spirit's doing, then we see verse 13. He was in the wilderness 40 days. Anybody ever watched that uh, show on cable called Naked and Afraid? Okay, be honest. Okay. I've got a few people. Pastor, we're not going to tell you we watched something that said naked in it. Okay, they don't show anything. I want you to, to think about why is that appropriate here for Jesus? Jesus didn't go into the wilderness naked, but... He didn't have 
He didn't have anything. He was absolutely alone. With one exception. Who was in his ear 24-7 for 40 days? Satan. And that had to be extremely difficult. You know, and I've had people ask questions, you know, pretty deep questions. Well, it's kind of unfair. He was God. You know, what kind of temptation was there really? But what do we know about Jesus? Jesus was not only true God, but he was also true man. And what we also know about Jesus as he faced this, I'm going to show you a picture, if you would. Uh, the next one, I forgot to bring that one up. You see the shadow? Can you see the shadow there? That menacing voice in his ear constantly. How many have that menacing voice in your ear constantly? And yeah, don't say, yeah, it's my spouse. <laughs> Because that's what the devil is. Not your spouse. But in your ear. Oh, a little bit of kneecap isn't going to hurt you, Karen. And, and the point about all of this is that it's that constant pecking away. That constant driving the nail. That constant irritation, that constant pulling at the heart, pulling at the mind, pulling at the soul. And that's what the devil did to Jesus for 40 days. But don't we face that like all the time? Almost every waking moment, the devil's in our ear. And as we go on, if you would, I want you to look at this Bible verse so we understand where we are with Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 4, the writer of the Hebrews says this. Read it with me. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Was it fair that Jesus was true God and could defeat temptation? Or was this just a big farce, a big fraud? Were the temptations real? Was Jesus still true man? It didn't matter if he had the strength to defeat them. The temptations were still real. And as we hear that, that last phrase, in every respect has been tempted as we are. We can't come up with this idea Jesus didn't understand. Jesus doesn't face what I face. Jesus never went through what I'm going through. Why? respect Jesus understands us better than we understand and has been tempted as we have been tempted and absolutely for it. And as we start looking for it, are we going to find it? Yeah. Is the devil going to trap us in it? Yeah. Are we yeah. How many feel guilty probably 90% of the time? I do. And as we 
recognize that that's exactly where the devil wants us to be he wants us to think god doesn't love us god doesn't care about us we are worthless sinful cruddy human beings and god can't possibly love us because of how weak and sinful we have become but the opposite is true because of this very thing and because of this very thing, we know that not only does Jesus overcome temptation, but now what is he able to do for us? Hebrews chapter 2 puts it this, this way. Read it with me. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are tempted. How does he do that? You know, Bart said something very, very deep, and I don't know if you caught it. I'm tempted in every other place except here. What's going on here? What's going on here? Listening to his word. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I wanted you to say. Because here, what is he doing in our minds? What is he doing in our hearts? What is he doing in our souls? Strengthening, communicating, planting. And as he's strengthening, communicating, and planting, he is planting what? Planting those things that we will need, not only in the moment we're in, but down the road. I don't know how many times I've heard somebody come to me and talk about a sermon I preached years ago and they will say, when you said that, and I said, I have no idea when I said that. <laughs> but that's because the Holy Spirit is working, and the Holy Spirit is using whatever was planted, whatever was said, whatever you heard, whatever you read, whatever you listened to from the power of His Word to do in your mind, in your heart, what you needed at that moment. And that's Jesus at work in you. Because remember, Jesus is God's Word incarnate. And with Jesus at work in you, He is giving you what you need to face the temptations that you face. You are not alone. And that's so important we remember it. Jesus was truly alone except with Satan in His ear. For you and me, we still have Satan in our ear, but are we alone? No, because who's with us? God Himself, Jesus Christ our Savior, the power of the Holy Spirit in heart and in mind, and not, not being alone makes all the difference as we're being tempted. Not being alone makes all the difference as we face whatever we're facing. Because too often we're thinking when we're alone, well, I'm alone, I'm vulnerable, but we're truly not. In Paul's letter to the Corinthians, oh wait, yeah, Paul writes this. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. Got that? Look around. Just look around the congregation today. We all face similar temptations. Said, no, mine are far worse than theirs. No, they're not. But it's important that we recognize temptation is not sin. Sin is sin. Temptation is temptation. When we yield to temptation, then it's sin. But temptation is not sin. So how do we face it? God is and he will not let you be, in, be tempted beyond your ability. Your ability to do what? Very, very simply, just like Rachel said. Say no. Don't do it. Walk away. And that's easier said than done, but the fact is, that's what we need to be thinking and have the strength to do when it comes. But with temptation, he will also provide the way of escape. Now, who's in that year? The devil's in one year. Who's in the other? 
How many times do you remember seeing those cartoons or seeing those movies where the devil's on one shoulder and the angel's on the other, right? I ran across one. I just had, I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up. I just had to put it in. I just had to. <laughs> and, and maybe you can read this at the bottom and maybe not. Vikings and devil have horns. Coincidence? I don't think so. Okay, take that away before I get in trouble. I want you to think about that kind of image. The devil's constantly in one of your ears. Who needs to be in the other one to balance and overcome him. God does. God, his word, his power, his love, his grace, his mercy, his gifts, all need to be in the other ear. All need to be flooding into the other ear so we can face with strength what is going on from the devil on the other side. So we can face with certainty and power and hope what's going on on the other side. The devil is going to be relentless. But who also is relentless? God himself. He does not want to give you up. He does not want to let you go. He does not want to allow you to overcome. He does not want to see you suffer. He wants to provide his love and his grace and his mercy. So... How do we face temptation? The devil's in your ear. What needs to be in the other one? God does. So like Bart said, you need to be here. Hearing God's word. Letting him plant it. Letting it grow. Letting it be present when we need to tap into it. Because there is forgiveness, love, and salvation in the Word. There is strength and power and grace in the Word. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion of the Spirit, be abide with us all.